We're going to take a look back at the fundamental theorem part one, which we didn't use a whole lot in this section. We just talked about it. So it says that the derivative of the area function is the original function. So if I have something that looks like the derivative of the integral of t squared dt bounded between 17 and x, since the derivative and the integral are opposites, they're undoing each other, this is going to give me back x evaluated at t. So it's going to give me back, sorry to write a t there, x squared. That's it. So if you think about this again, if I do the antiderivative, get something like t cubed over 3, of course, plug the x in, plug the 17 in, the 17 is not going to matter because when I differentiate, it's going to be a constant. It's going to go to 0, and my x cubed over 3 is going to differentiate back into 3x cubed, 3x squared over 3, which is back to x squared. So I just need to, again, what I need to do is plug x in to the original function. So that's what I get. So if I wanted to take the derivative of the antiderivative from 1 to x of sine squared t dt, it's going to be sine squared x. All right, that's it. Now, it does get a little more complicated if one of my boundaries isn't just x, if my boundary is some function u of x. And so there's going to be some chain rule happening in here. So if my boundary isn't just x, what's going to happen is when I integrate this, I'm going to get something that's in terms of t. Then I'm going to plug u of x into it, and then I'm going to have to differentiate it. So u prime is going to have to be in there because I didn't already integrate u. It's going to need to have its chain rule done. So what we're going to get here is f of u of x, but the derivative needs to be multiplied by u prime of x. Okay, Because we need a chain rule for the differentiation part. So we would just plug this in if it was x, but since it's not just x, the derivative is going to have that chain rule piece. So let's see how that's going to look over here. So similarly, I am integrating t squared, just like we did up here, t squared. But what I'm plugging in is not just x, it's natural log of x. So the derivative of this integral will be natural log of x gets plugged in for t, so it's squared, then times the derivative, so then times 1 over x. So that would be our finished derivative of the antiderivative. Okay. Now, these are functions, so it's not something that I can just type into decimals like I was doing before for those numbers. That's okay. All right, and so the next one, it's similar. We would have our sine squared t. We're going to replace t with x cubed, and if I'm differentiating it, we're going to need to multiply by its derivative. So we're going to have sine squared x cubed times the derivative of x cubed, which is 3x squared. Okay, uh, and then the next page, again, making use of the fundamental theorem part one, but some other properties as well. Now, the fundamental theorem part one was built to have x as the upper bound. What happens if it's the lower bound? Well, we know that we can rewrite this as negative. I'll put the ddx right there. It's gotta go somewhere. But negative, the integral from five to x. So I'm switching the order, switching the order of where the x is by getting the negative in there. And so this is going to differentiate and integrate back into negative the square root of x squared plus 1. So the x just pops on in there, but the negative is going to be there because the bounds were backwards. Okay, so then this one is going to be very similar to that idea. There's going to be a negative because the bounds are in opposite direction. So I'll just go ahead and put my negative out there, parentheses open. Now we're going to pop in e to the x, and because e to the x is not just x, we're going to chain rule it as well. So negative e to the x gets cubed plus natural log of e to the x. That whole thing can get chain ruled by e to the x, because they both have e to the x as their derivative. I don't need to do it individually. They're both going to have it. I could, or I could distribute that if I wanted. So I have negative e to the x times e to the 3x plus x, because uh, that simplifies natural log of e to the x is x. And the last one, 
this one is a variable in both parts. The fundamental theorem of calculus does not allow for that, but we can separate it at any arbitrary value. Remember that the value doesn't even need to be between them. So we can separate this into the derivative of the integral from, say, 5x to 0, any value. You could put 300 there. It doesn't matter. You're just separating it at a numeric value and then adding on the integral from that same numeric value to x to the fourth. And so now we can do this one has the x in the wrong spot. And so it's going to be negative because we need to get that x moved up with that negative coefficient. So it's going to be negative and then we're going to have the cosine cubed of 5x and then times our 5 from the chain rule then plus this one's already on top so it's not going to change sign so plus our cosine cubed of x to the fourth chain rule on that times 4x cubed so a tiny bit of simplification if you want that's negative 5 cosine cubed of 5x plus 4x to the third times cosine cubed of x to the fourth.